Hi, I'm Rebecca Winter of Strong Mama Yoga. And today we're going to do a deep dive into three different pelvic floor exercises that you can do during pregnancy and during your postpartum and beyond to help uh, strengthen your pelvic floor. So first off, I want to briefly discuss the pelvic floor so we understand what we're working with. So your pelvic floor um, is the group of muscles and fascia connective tissue that go from the base of the perineum, so right down at the base of your pubic um, area, up to the uterus. So it's layer and layer and layer. It's not just one little muscle that you're tightening. So when we first teach about working with the pelvic floor, um, you may be familiar with a Kegel. And we say, think about contracting the muscle that you would, you would use if you want to stop urination. And so that makes it seem a little bit more like it's just one single muscle, but that's a really nice in to help people understand how to connect with their pelvic floor. So if you've never done any pelvic floor work before, when I say think about contracting your pelvic floor, think to yourself, okay, squeeze that muscle around the urethra that would stop me from urinating. You can also think about squeezing the muscles around the anus that would stop you if you were in the middle of pooping. We're gonna be really talking about some things that people are squeamish about. So let's just be okay with that. So moving on, the pelvic floor isn't just those two muscles, and those are actually two separate parts of the pelvic floor if you're thinking about the urethra and the anus. So if you imagine that your pelvic floor, think about your hip bones being the size of my hands, and then the hip bones coming around to the front of the, the pelvis, um, the muscles that we consider pelvic floor muscles they coat the whole inside of that pelvic area, and then they also rise up and up and up to meet the uterus and several of the other organs that are in the lower abdomen. So it's really kind of like a hammock for your intestines and for all of the organs that are in that lower part of the pelvis, including the uterus. So strengthening the pelvic floor also helps with all of the supporting core muscles that are, are helping keep baby nice and secure in the uterus. And the more we can strengthen the pelvic floor and those supporting muscles, so transverse abdominis, obliques, the less back pain that we tend to have later in pregnancy. Also, the more we can learn to interact with the pelvic floor, the more we learn that not only is it a matter of tightening the pelvic floor and strengthening it, it's also a matter of learning how to release it. Because when birthing time comes, we're going to want to be able to fully relax that pelvic floor and use the supporting muscles, the uterus itself, the obliques, the transverse abdominis, to help push baby down and out. Then when we come into the postpartum period, we want to start to strengthen that pelvic floor again so that we don't have issues with incontinence, um, issues with back pain that can come with a weak pelvic floor postpartum. We want to really just start, and to straight, start to strengthen that whole area. So the more we can be conscious of that during pregnancy, the faster we see people healing in the postpartum time. So all of that out of the way. I'm going to show you this brief series that you can do every day during pregnancy or a few times a week or whenever you think of it, just to start to connect with your pelvic floor. So I'm gonna ask you to start by sitting in a comfortable position with your hips propped higher than your knees. Right now I have my sits bones on a yoga block and I've chosen to sit in easy pose, cross-legged pose. That's comfortable for me. If you um, don't enjoy this pose or if, if you're near the end of pregnancy and you're having any sort of discomfort in your pubic symphysis, then you might prefer to sit up on your knees. So in this case, you can take one or two yoga blocks or a nice pillow and again, place them out under your sits bones and sitting up on your knees like this. 
So I'll stay like this, but you are welcome to either do easy pose or knee. So once you find a position that's comfortable, I'd like you to place a hand on the heart and a hand on baby and let your eyes close. So we're gonna start with simple breath work. So let's just take a few deep breaths in the nose, letting them out the mouth. Good, keep going at your pace. I love starting with breath work or pranayama that includes opening the mouth on the exhales. The more you can think about the jaw being soft and open, the more open the cervix is during birthing time. There's a really sweet connection between the jaw and the sphincters, including the cervix, which is a sphincter in our body, to help that release to make it easier to birth baby. Now I'd like you to think about your hips getting heavier, sinking into what you're sitting on. Start to lengthen your spine, growing from the pelvis through the low back, through the mid back, through the upper back. Allowing the shoulders to come back and down. Neck is nice and long with the crown of the head reaching towards the sky. And you may even feel the chin tuck slightly as you find that nice sweet length in the back of the neck. And just allow yourself to take this time to let everything else fade away except you and baby. Be here now. Good, keeping a nice long spine, you can let the hands settle down to a place where they feel comfortable. And you can either leave your eyes closed to listen, or you can open your eyes if that helps you hear my words. So the first exercise is going to be very similar to a basic Kegel. And we're gonna practice it in two different ways. So there are some teachers that believe that you should always think about contracting that pelvic floor on an inhale, and some who believe you should always think about that on an exhale. There are valid reasons for both. I like to teach both because I think that depending on your anatomy and also where you are in pregnancy or postpartum, there's value in both. So we're going to start by taking a nice deep inhale. And then on the exhale, think about squeezing those muscles in the pelvic floor, the base of that perineum. Good. Inhale, release completely. Exhale, tighten. Good. Keep going like that. Let your breaths be long. So think about a nice, even inhale and an equally even exhale as we tighten and hold. Good. So you're holding for the full length of the exhale and you're releasing the full length of the inhale. Now, for those of you who feel a strong connection to your pelvic floor or have done this work before, you might want to think of this more as an elevator. So with the next exhale, I'm starting that elevator on the bottom floor and I'm rising it up, 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 so I can feel each layer starting to contract. Then on the inhale, I let that elevator come down, down. Good, continuing to work with that.
and one more. Good. So now take a moment just to breathe neutrally, letting everything relax. And now we're going to feel what that's like if we reverse the breathing. So this time on the inhales, we're going to contract and think about lifting that elevator up. And on the exhales, we're going to release completely. So on my next inhale, I'm going to start to squeeze those muscles and feel those layers rising and rising. And then on the exhale, I'm gonna let that elevator come down all the way to the ground floor, releasing completely. Good, continuing at your pace. So in my experience, I find that releasing with the exhales is most helpful as you're getting close to your birthing time. It's totally fine to practice this at any stage of pregnancy. You're not going to start yourself birthing just with the breath work alone, just with the exercises alone. These are all things to prepare our body. So when our body does kick into that birthing time, we are ready to go. But the nice thing is this really follows how we breathe when we're birthing. So we tend to be exhaling and pushing. And I say pushing, but a lot of us uh, experience involuntary pushing when we're birthing. So we don't even need to really worry about the pushing. Our uterus is going to kick in and do that for us. What we can do to support the uterus is breathing with it. So if I exhale with a nice soft jaw and a nice open pelvis, that's going to help give baby that space to come down and out. And that's a big reason why it's so important to not just contract the muscle, but also allow it to release. So inhale, I'm preparing. I'm contracting. Exhale, I am releasing completely. Good, one more time. Great. Letting the eyes open if they're closed. So this is your most simple pelvic floor exercise. You can do it at any point of the day. I used to always try to do it when I was stopped at a traffic light while driving. You can do it while you're on the couch watching TV. Super simple. We're going to move into another exercise that I do in the majority of my yoga videos because I think it's so helpful in a lot of ways. So we're gonna stand up on the mat and let your feet come nice and wide as long as you feel comfortable and supported. So my mamas who are in the third trimester, if you are having any of that pubic symphysis um, shooting pain, you would wanna bring your stance in a little bit. But for most of my mamas at all stages in pregnancy, you can just get your feet nice and wide to a place where it feels comfortable. Then I want you to bring your heels in a little bit, around 45 degrees. So we're going to be doing some wide leg squatting, yogic squatting here. And I'm going to start by inhaling up and exhaling down. Good. Inhale, arms rise, gaze rises. Exhale, hands move through heart center as the legs bend. Great. So as I'm doing this with any squat, I want to make sure that my knees are tracking towards my toes and not in front of my toes. And then I'm keeping my back nice and neutral. There's sometimes the tendency to really lean forward or arch. I want my spine to be neutral. You can think of it as straight, but we know we've got that nice natural curve in our low back. So now we're going to start to bring in some of the pelvic floor work. 
So on the inhale, I'm going to think about tightening those muscles, bringing everything up. And on the exhale, I'm releasing completely. Inhale, I tighten. Exhale, I release. And again, you can either think of this as just the basics, squeezing the muscles around the urethra and the anus, or you can think of that elevator going up through all of the layers. So this is also just a wonderful core exercise. When I'm doing it, I'm thinking about hugging my baby in. So I'm starting to work with all of the muscles in my core, and I don't mean just the front of my abdomen. We're not talking about six packs here. I'm talking about all of the muscles that run around my low back, my side waist, and up front. And in pregnancy, we specifically want to think about the oblique hugging baby in, and the transverse abdominis. So nice and low below the belly button hugging baby. Good. Deep. And you can always change the speed. This can be way too much sometimes. So you can slow it down. Or if you're in that second trimester and feeling groovy, you can speed it up. Great. One more. Good. Next time you rise. Let the arms come high, parallel your feet, and we're going to take a nice wide leg forward fold. So if your hands don't reach the floor comfortably, you can bring them down to blocks. And if you are feeling super bendy today, you're welcome to take your favorite forward fold position. Maybe hands come to your ankles, or maybe palms even come behind you, as long as you feel well supported. The last squats that we were doing are really nice for grounding. You may have noticed we were taking that energy from above and bringing it down through baby down to the ground. Next, we're going to be working on bringing the energy up. So as you're ready, you're going to bring the heels in again at 45 degrees, bend the knees. If you are feeling at all lightheaded, I just want you to take a moment to bring your elbows to your knees and take a breath. <sighs> and then we're all going to hug baby, hug in at that pelvic floor as you with a flat back rise up. Good. Great. And we're just going to stop here at the top. You can take a hand to the heart and a hand to baby. So the way we just rose up is a great way to think about rising anytime you're getting up from the floor or getting up from grabbing something. I think about hugging baby in and hugging the pelvic floor in before you make that upward movement so that you have all the support that you need. Leave me your low back will thank you if you can make that a habit. All right, so let's start our next set here. So we're going to be reversing the motion. So we can inhale, arms rise. Exhale, we come down and bring that energy up. Good. Exhale, we come down. Inhale, we rise. Great. And now as you're ready, we're going to bring that pelvic floor into play. So this time as we exhale, we're going to hug the pelvic floor in and up. And as we inhale, we release completely. Exhale to hug and lift. Inhale, release. Good. Keep on going. And you can see with this type of squatting, we're grabbing that energy from the earth, coming up through baby heart and crown and letting it fall back down. This can be really nice if you're having one of those days where you are just super sluggish. Bring that energy up. We're working on strengthening our legs, strengthening our core. 
And just about any midwife will tell you if you are in that third trimester, getting those squats in is a really nice way to help encourage your body to get ready for birthing. Good, two more. Awesome, all right. So now parallel feet, you can raise the arms and then come down into a nice forward fold, letting the head go, letting the neck go, letting the shoulders release. Knees to be a little bent, nice and springy. Nice deep breath. Coming back to the idea of exhaling with an open, soft jaw. Good. So we're going to come down into a low yogic squat. And you can use one or two blocks or nothing at all. It's really up to you. I'm going to use my blocks for this example. So we heel toe the feet in. And now I'm putting my sits bones down directly on the block. If you have super good balance, this is a pose that's been in your practice for a while. You don't need the blocks here. But even if you have been doing this for a long time and you just want to take the break by having the blocks, please do. Let yourself be comfortable. So I've got my elbows pressing into the inside of my knees here. Plenty of room for baby. And hands are in heart position. I'm going to think about dropping the tailbone down. So in this position, sometimes we let that belly sag a bit forward, which really causes some strain on the low back. So I want to think about continuing to let baby be close to me, close to the spine, long, low back, and then feeling that length of the spine grow all the way up through the crown of my head. Good. So this is another lovely position to ground, to help with your pelvic floor exercises. It gives your spine and your pelvis a really nice stretch. So this is nice too if you only have time for one pose a day. Think about doing a yogic squat. My only mamas that I would say you might want to think about it before you do this would again be that pubic symphysis disorder if you're having any issues there. But on the blocks, you often feel pretty supported like this. So now we're going to come back again to that same idea of tightening the pelvic floor. So we'll start now with the inhale relaxing. So inhale, I release completely. Exhale, I start to bring that pelvic floor in, riding it up, up, up. Inhale, release. Exhale, start to tighten and draw up. So keep going at your pace. So I mentioned earlier how when we are thinking about tightening on the inhale and releasing on the exhale, that's a lot like the ideal breath work when we're birthing. If after birth, postpartum, you go and see a pelvic floor physical therapist, which I highly recommend, they are phenomenal, then they will most likely tell you that as you exhale, you should think about tightening that pelvic floor. And as you inhale, you relax. And that's going to help when you have those urges to sneeze, because our body naturally, right before we sneeze, will tighten the pelvic floor. And you know that's an exhale exhale. And postpartum, some women end up with a little bit of leaking because their pelvic floor forgot that it needs to tighten right before that sneeze. And the sneeze comes as a little bit of a shock. 
So especially in the postpartum time, I do recommend working a bit more with thinking of releasing on the inhales and tightening on the exhale, like we're doing right now. Good, now give your body a break. If you need to move your arms, your wrists, your shoulders, go for it. And when you're ready, we're gonna find that position again. We're just going to reverse. So now we're going into birthing mode. So on your inhale now, I want you to think of that pelvic floor contracting, drawing close and rising. And as we exhale, we release completely. Good, nice long, slow inhales as the pelvic floor rises. And long, slow exhales out the mouth as the pelvic floor releases fully. So there's no magic number as to how often to do these exercises. It really is going to be just what works for you. Three a day, better than nothing. 50 times a day, rock on mama. You do you. And the more we can think about it and develop a connection to our pelvic floor, the better we can feel through our pregnancy, and the faster the body is going to heal in postpartum. One more. Good, all right. So let's return to a comfortable seat for just a moment here. Once again, we'll place a hand on the heart and a hand on baby just to come back to that home base. Letting the hips be heavy, growing the spine nice and long, letting the shoulders be soft, shoulder blades come down. Good. And let's do three closing breaths together. So as you're ready, inhaling through the nose, out the soft mouth, soft jaw. Do more your pace. Letting the breath return to neutral. Bringing hands to heart center, lightly bowing the head. And I always like to end by giving thanks first to ourselves, by caring for our body and relaxing our minds and emotions. We can be more caring and loving to those in our lives. And let's thank our baby for practicing with us and lifting the gaze, we can thank each other for the namaste. Thank you for practicing with me today.